The year is 2020. You're getting through COVID, you're figuring out your life, and you decide to get into photography. You buy a Fuji X-T3, and you love the charm, you love the aesthetics. You go down the rabbit hole, and you buy uh, even more of the lenses, and things are good. But then you get more into wildlife photography, and you quickly realize that the X-T3 um, not an autofocus machine, to say the least. Uh, you go on YouTube and you see uh, the likes of the new Canon systems and the R5 and the R6, and you're watching all of their tracking and eye detect, and you get really envious because you want to go shoot birds in flight. So you take the plunge, you sell your entire Fuji kit, you go to Canon, you buy the R5, and you are in autofocus bliss. Um, that was what happened to me, and then I left Canon. And I think, you know, when people ask me why it happened, eventually it came down to just cost. I thought the R5 and the 100 to 500 lens that I was shooting was just way too expensive. Um, but the performance was certainly very, very good, and it was a big jump from, you know, essentially using something that, that felt like the autofocus for, for animals. I mean, anything other than like a single point autofocus on the X-T3 kind of felt useless to me. Uh, so as we sit here today in 2022, this gets me talking about the X-H2. If I were sitting here in 2021 and the X-H2 came out, with all of the performance that it offers, and I was an X-T3 shooter looking for an upgrade, the X-H2 would feel incredible. The problem is the X-H2 came out after the X-H2S, and having shot both cameras for a couple of weeks, I am quite confident in my original thoughts before I'd ever even touched an X-H2 that the X-H2S is way, way better. Um, I've been shooting both cameras side by side for about two weeks, and I will say the X-H2 is a good camera. If you bought it, or if you're thinking about buying it, and, and that's where your budget kind of ends, it's a good camera. Um, the things I really like about both bodies is that you know they, they're built the same, the same ergonomics. Um, I often forget which body I'm shooting with until I look down and, and kind of see what's going on see like the badging on the back of the camera. Um, I love that they both have, uh, you know, solid construction, that beautiful five and a half million dot uh, EVF. Uh, those things are all fantastic. But my issue, and I think that this goes to whether it's marketing or, or miscommunication or weird perceptions, people have this idea that the X-H2S is the video camera and the X-H2 is the stills camera. And having shot them both, having shot a lot of video and stills on both, I think that's just completely uh, off base here. Um, when it comes to video, let's get that out of the way first on the X-H2. Um, it's pretty good. The 4K60 looks good. Uh, the 1080, 120 looks good. Uh, the 8K I find useless, as I found it useless on the R5. I don't know why we're shooting 8K in this day and age, especially on consumer cameras. I mean, 8K to me still feels like something that if you you have a demonstrated need for 8K, you're probably using um, a, a higher end system. You know, I, I just don't I don't see it. Maybe I'm missing something, but the files are huge. Everything about it is huge, and I don't see what's the point for most people's delivery. Um, I. Looking at the 8K footage, of course I don't have an 8K monitor, but looking at it on my 4K monitor and on my MacBook screen, um, it, it's not jumping off the table to me that it looks way better. So I, I'm not seeing obvious benefits there. Um, I will say for sure that if you have the X-H2 and you want to shoot some video, it's definitely very competent at shooting a lot of that, especially 24 frames per second and stuff like that. But as a video hybrid system, I would take the S 10 out of 10 times. The 4K 120 is something I definitely missed every time I had the X-H2 in my hands. Shooting both of these lenses uh, with wildlife, I, I still feel like 4K 120 is a deal breaker and um, the, the 4K, sorry, the 120 frames per second in 1080, it's, it's, that's all you've got. 
then it's better to have than nothing. But the 4K, I think, is... A lo- the 4K 120 alone would be worth spending the money for me uh, to upgrade to the X-H2S. Where I really have issues with the X-H2 is that I do not see the resolution buff. Um, and I have talked to several people, people who have both cameras. I've watched every review. I've looked at things on my big monitor. I haven't started printing photos from the X-H2. I've printed a couple X-H2S shots in the past. But here's the thing, the 26 megapixels on the X-H2S for me is more than enough. The X-H2 at 40 megapixels, I just am not seeing the benefit with my eye. I was looking this morning at test files that I shot with both cameras, um, and and there's just not one case where I saw an increase in resolution. And I've had people talking um, in different places online, kind of saying that they're actually seeing sharper files out of the X-H2S for whatever reason. Um, but I... <coughs> I even did some tests with my dog, a uh, big golden retriever, lots of texture and, and fur details on his face. He was napping. I was seven or eight feet away shooting the 200 F2, which is very sharp. Comparing those files, I still do not see a resolution bonus on the X-H2. Now, the one thing I was wrong about in my initial video is, and I think you have to commend Fuji for this, the X-H2 seems to do really well in low light uh, compared to the X-H2S. They, they both seem to do about the same. As I said, when I'm looking at these files in Lightroom, I have to bring up um, my metadata to see which camera I shot. And for me, um, I, I guess it depends if you take that as a win or a loss. I think the issue is that the two cameras are priced so close that the X-H2S offers way more for the price and the X-H2 doesn't do anything better. Um, I feel like this is going to trigger some people and I'm going to get a lot of comments saying, hey, the X-H2 has better resolution, it has this, the X-H2 is the better stills camera. I absolutely disagree with that idea. I will dismiss that notion 100 out of 100 times. I am not seeing that in my testing. I do not think the X-H2 does anything better than the X-H2S. Which you might say, that's how it's supposed to be. The X-H2 is a cheaper camera. And I would say, you know, yeah, I guess if you look at it that way, for sure, you would, you would think that the X-H2S being more expensive would be more of the flagship. Um, and it is. I just don't really see who the X-H2 is for. If you're going to spend that much money on a camera... I think you should go the extra distance and buy the X-H2S that is much faster. The autofocus is definitely something I noticed. The autofocus on the X-H2 was definitely noticeably slower than the X-H2S, much slower to react. Um, I didn't feel like it was as sticky. So the X-H2S is shooting way faster, way better um, uh, FPS and better crop modes with that stacked sensor when you're shooting you're not you're not getting this automatic crop on any any type of burst shooting like the X-H2 is giving you um, you're getting way better autofocus uh, you're getting the same noise and you're getting way better video performance out of the X-H2S so overall the X-H2S is just a way more powerful camera than the X-H2 now a friend brought up the point that the X-T5 is really not that much cheaper than the X-H2, and people are saying that the X-T5 has uh, even slower autofocus. So I guess if you're looking at the X-T5 as an upgrade, and you're saying, well, I want to get a better autofocus system, and I, I, wanna, I really don't want to spend that much money, but you're looking at the X-T5, what does the X-H2 get you? Um, assuming you're not married to the dials on the X-T series, then the X-H is going to get you that uh, the custom mode dial, which is something I couldn't live without at this this point. Um, it's going to get you better autofocus with the same sensor. It's going to get you a much better EVF. So I think the X-H2 is, is a better camera than the X-T5 from everything I'm seeing. But again, I feel like having had a lot of experience with a lot of different cameras, a lot of different shooters in the wildlife game, is especially what I'm talking about, there's one camera that Fuji makes that does something special, and that's the X-H2S. I don't think the X-H2, 
for a wildlife shooter brings anything to the table that you're not getting with other cameras, especially from other brands. And I think if you're saying, I wanna focus on stills, that's all I wanna do, and I don't wanna spend the extra money to go to the S, then that's where I would start wondering, well then what does the X-H2 even give you over um, like an R7 or something like that? And that is one of the elephants in the room. Fuji has limited lenses for wildlife. Now I am a huge fan of the 150 to 600. I really love it and I love shooting that lens paired on the X-H2S. But if you look at other options and say, well, you could go to Canon and you could buy an R7 and an RF 800 and have even more reach, uh, albeit you're losing the zoom, you're losing a lot of things, but you're getting a very sharp lens with even longer reach for way cheaper. So I think you have to look at all of those options that are available to you before you decide which route to go. And Look, I, I have always said I'm going to keep my channel honest. I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to get sent a bunch of gear to review and then tell you things I don't believe about it. And here's the one thing that I learned having the 200 F2 and the X-H2 for the last couple weeks to review. And that is that the X-H2S and the 150 to 600 kick so much butt. They are so good that I found myself not using the X-H2. I had it with me, I had both kits with me on all of my shoots, usually both of them wrapped around my neck, um, with straps obviously, and I just found that no matter, even when I switched lenses, I always wanted to shoot the X-H2S. When I reviewed my shots, the X-H2 never gave me anything in, in post, looking at it on the computer, that I thought, oh wow, like that's an advantage to shooting that 40 megapixel sensor. So all I noticed is that when I was in the field, usually when I found that the autofocus was slipping a bit more than I was used to, and I checked which body, because again, they're identical, so the only way to really know is looking at the label. I almost always found that whenever something didn't seem like it was working, it was always on the X-H2. Um, this video is not meant to sound like I'm trashing the X-H2. I think the X-H2 is a perfectly capable camera that can deliver beautiful results. Did I get some nice photos on the X-H2? 100%. The trouble is the X-H2S does everything the X-H2 does and more. And I think that's where I'm, I'm drawing my line in the sand because people who are talking about the resolution on the X-H2, again, for wildlife shooters specifically, I don't see it. It's I don't feel like I'm able to crop those files any more than I can crop the X-H2S files. When I don't crop the files, I'm not seeing extra detail. When I shoot an extremely sharp prime lens, Fuji's most expensive, best lens, 200 F2, those files out of the X-H2 do not look better to my eye than the X-H2S. So that gets me thinking, the only reason, the only reason, in my opinion, to buy the X-H2 over the X-H2S is to save money. And if you're trying to save money, then I don't think that a $2,500 plus camera with a $2,500 lens starts sounding that attractive to me. Um, I just got back from, from a day of shooting with friends who had... Uh, Unfortunately, all Canon friends, but what, what are my friends shooting? One of them shooting an R7 with a 300 2.8 and teleconverters. Two of them were shooting R10s with the cheap 100 to 400. And one of them was shooting like, I mean, almost a film camera, some old like Rebel or something with the Sigma 150 to 600. Uh, and then I had the X-H2S and the X-H2 with uh, the, the 200 and the 150 to 600, and I was swapping lenses on the cameras. And here's the thing, everyone's pictures looked exactly the same. Um, you, I'm not telling a difference. Everyone, you know, good shooters, we're all basically shooting the same angles because we're shooting mostly roadside owls, so there's not a lot you can do creatively from positioning. The photo, those, they all look the same. So here's the thing. If the photos out of a $2,000 kit from the R10 and the 100 to 400 look the same as the X-H2 and the 150 to 600, then why would you spend five or 6,000 on the Fuji kit when you can spend 2,000 on the Canon kit? So this video is not saying that I think everyone should go buy the R10. I think that if you only want to get into wildlife if you're not shooting wildlife and you want to shoot basic stills, 
Um, and that's your main focus. And I, I think you can't beat that option from Canon. The R10 and the 100 to 400 is just so cheap. It's so good for what it does. Why I would never shoot an R10 is because video is very important to me. Um, speed is very important to me. That R10 has some serious rolling shutter problems. And yes, you can shoot around it. You know, my friends shooting the camera, basically their point is it's super cheap. I'll shoot a lot of shots in the burst. And, you know, sure, sometimes if my subject is moving or I'm moving, sometimes there's going to be rolling shutter and I'm going to lose a couple frames. But they say bang for buck. Nine times out of 10, they're getting the frame they want eventually, and the camera's delivering a workable result, which is what the point is. Um, for me, I, I want a camera, especially when you look at rolling shutter in video, I wanna know that the X-H2S or whatever camera I'm using can just deliver um, pound for pound in, in any situation, and that's what I find it does that the other things can't do. Um, so I'm sitting here today, looking at all the cameras on the market, thinking about all the options of what kind of cool gear is out there and, and what appeals to me, and I still say I don't think there's another camera out there that offers you what the X-H2S does, and that's why I like it so much more than the X-H2. Um, I don't I don't expect Fuji's gonna love what I'm saying in this video um, but again I'm, I'm not out here trying to sell you an X-H2 um, the X-H2S if you're considering Fuji is a fantastic camera it is so good it's so much fun to use uh, it performs so well the autofocus is very reliable the video is amazing and the stills quality looks really 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 good so when you're trying to tell me that the X-H2 has better stills, I, like I said, I don't see it. Um, I think if you're going to shoot Fuji for wildlife, the X-H2S and the 150-600 to is the clear option. Uh, the F2-200, I'm going to have lots of videos about that. It's a very interesting lens. It's very, very good. I like it a lot. Um, it is very short, so it depends where you're shooting. I've had cases in the last couple weeks where it's been amazing. I've had cases where it didn't offer a benefit. Um, a perfect example was shooting short ear owls after dusk with the 200 versus the, the cheap R10 kit. And ultimately, the R10 shots look just as good, if not better. Even though my F2 aperture was amazing, the owls were just too far away. So by the time I had to crop in to the point where I could get a usable shot, not even a detailed shot, just like a usable environment with the owl, um, it was just way too much cropping. Um, even on the X-H2 with all those megapixels, it just didn't work. So I think in the right conditions, and again, I'll have more on this lens soon. Um, if you're shooting something close, mammals or songbirds, I, I would love to shoot it in the boat with loons when they come close in the kayak. That lens can do some serious work. But if I were to carry one lens into the field with me, it would still be the 150 to 600 because I'd rather have a slower aperture and that reach and the flexibility um, nine times out of 10, even for close subjects, if it's close enough, then I can work with an aperture that's a couple stops slower and then work on the file and post. So overall, um, yeah, I was right. You know, my thoughts about the X-H2 not being a great wildlife camera are there. The X-H2 is a good camera. The X-H2S is a revolution. That's why it won awards. That's why it won product of the year from DP Review and, uh, you know, Gerald Undone raves about it as a video camera. Um, you know, there's nothing on the market in this price point that can compete with what the X-H2S can bring you. Um, there's lots of stuff that can do the same thing that the X-H2 can do. So for me, if I was buying into the Fuji system, an extra $500 American, it's not pocket change, but if you're buying a camera that you wanna shoot for the next five, six, seven years and really kinda of get every bit of juice out of that gear, the X-H2S is definitely the winner. Um, yeah, so I'm sending the X-H2 back this week and I'm not gonna miss it. If I need a second body from Fuji, it'll be a second X-H2S. So there's my thoughts. If you have an X-H2, tag me. If you're still a Fuji shooter, I still love to see your work. Uh, like I said, the X-H2 is capable of getting really good photographs, but I still think the X-H2S is definitely the better piece of kit uh, and I think it's the better value even though it's more expensive. So those are my thoughts.